we're ready to begin. Um, I mean, when, when we say stakeholders, of course, we all know that there are lots of different stakeholders involved in higher education. There's government, there's employers, there's parents, there's funders, there's all sorts of people. But the critical ones whose voices have to be heard are, are, are those who, who, who are the consumers, in inverted commas, of what we do. They are the participants in, in, in our learning and teaching and, and, and the, the students of our organizations and, and our courses. Um, we've spent a lot of time over the last few days talking about how the world is changing, how technology is infused in everything, how we need to open up our education systems so that they're more accessible to, to, to everyone regardless of, um, of, of their various life opportunities. We've talked about how lifelong learning, how continuous learning all the way through your life is going to be needed, and, and, and Minister Bartolo said, you know, that we don't need an education that, trains, that shows people how to sit in the bath. We need an education that trains, shows people how to live in really rough seas. Um, we, we understand in all areas of education that we need to modernise, but we find it really hard to do. And I think that what we need really from us, from our student. Um, our student representatives, our students here, who, some of whom have given up their exams to come and talk to us, so we have to be quite kind to them, um, is, 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 is how do they see that future? I mean, how would they see education over the coming years? How, how do they see the digital being in, infused with the traditional? How do they see um, use of education beyond school and university and college boundaries being incorporated into that formal, uh, that formal teaching? What should a new sort of 21st century education look like? I mean, it's a quite a tough question to throw across to you. Um, I've got any volunteers who would like to express their views on their current experience and how they think it should be and where it should go? Go for it. Right. Hi. Uh, you stand, up, stand up, you talk, and they can see who is speaking. Right. Hi, I'm Julia. I'm from the University Students Council. Um, I think over the years we've been seeing the, impl the implementation of uh, more technology and it has improved the student experience. It's uh, a very useful resource, but there's also a lot of areas where we can improve. Uh, one of the points I want to bring up was mentioned by Dr. Green yesterday, um, uh, mostly about research and assignments. He mentioned the idea of, uh, of disposable assignments, which um, happens quite a lot in Malta on a national level, where um, assignments are just given in, they're graded, and then they're thrown away. And if we could use technology to create a sort of online platform where uh, research that is carried out by students can be published and accessed even um, by other European countries, and even perhaps more internationally and globally. Um, it would obviously give much more of an incentive for students to carry out the research. It would make it more fruitful, and um, I think it would be a very good tool. That is one thing which I think would be very useful. Great. Thank you very much. Anybody else like to, like to contribute? Yeah. Thank you. Hi, I'm Sarah Zabi. Um, I came here on behalf of KNZ, which is the National Youth Council of Malta. Um, apart from what Julia was saying, I'm a university student myself, and I agree with what she was saying, especially when it comes to assignments. Um, I, I would like to mention maybe a point when it comes to organizations. I've involved in, in a good number of organizations, and I think the culture, especially with youth organizations, should be to move forward to an area where sort of in this non-formal or informal education, we are connected and we should use sort of these digital competencies through the, through the organizations and not just look how, of how we can sort of um, use education and in the strict academic sense, but also look at the other sort of forms of education and how we can use digital competencies in that. Great, thank you. Any other views? No? Reluctant? All right. So, so, okay, great. Here at the end. Thank you. So, um, good afternoon. My name is Luca. Um, I'm a student at MCAST, currently doing business. So, um, my basic story is I've passed through all, almost all levels that education has to offer in Malta. Currently now in level six. 
Um, I've done this um, despite of having learning uh, dis disabilities, because I don't like to use the word. Um, my only thing is, in my journey, I have found a lot of help from a lot of different people. However, um, in the case of Malta, it's, it's not the case for everyone. This, this, this evolution through um, digital, digital learning, it's good in, one, in some form of expert. But in the case of people with learning dif uh, difficulties, we are more likely to be activists. So it's more or less um, a situation where we need to see the thing. We take it in, we process it, and then we do it again. So that's base. The, the digital platform is good, but if it can cater a lot more to students in my situation, it would be ideal. So. Great. OK, thank you very much. I'll, I'll, throw it up. I'll, I'll throw you to the wolves, shall I? Um, any questions from the audience to the people we've been talking about for the last two days? Any questions from any of you to the students who are sitting at the front? Otherwise, I shall interrogate them. You mean, after all this talking we've done for two days about students and nobody's got anything to ask them? Um, do you think that we are too worried about your future, about your education? <laughs> um, hi, my name is Amy. I'm uh, studying last year in chemical engineering. Um, the only issue which, which it's quite specific for my course in this case, but um, we do find an issue when it comes to practical aspects, um, being trained. We have to be trained on a very expensive apparatus, which we do have um, in our schools. But unfortunately, although the resources are there, we do not have um, qualified educators which can teach us on them. Or rather, there isn't uh, the time for educators to teach us on such apparatus. So we find ourselves going into industry um, most of the time unprepared. Um, MCAS, I'm an MCAST student and MCAST is renowned for being uh, a vocational school, so we should be trained in, in, in such, um, in this certain aspect. So I think it would be ideal if we could be given more training with regards to the actual apparatus which we will be facing in our future, which would be very um, useful both for our future work and even when it comes to competition with regards to other people in the sector. Can I, can I ask you a question back? Because one, because one of our colleagues, when he's talking about it, said that, it, I mean, I paraphrase a little bit, said that almost anything you want to learn, if you look on YouTube, you can find it. And when my, when my adult kids want to know how to do something, unlike me, who goes, looks for the manual, they look on YouTube. Do you find the answers to those? I mean, do you go out and look for those sorts of questions on YouTube and other places? We do research on YouTube, but um, an apparatus which costs like almost a million um, would require for you to do actual training on it, which we are not licensed for and we okay, so you can't put your honest, hands on we it. don't even want the responsibility that something happens yeah. and we actually, so it would be really great if we could have actual practice on, yeah. on it. Okay. All right, so the limitations of YouTube and online when you're actually dealing with a million pound piece of equipment or something, yeah. Right. Cable, if you've got anything about open education that you'd like to put across. I just wonder whether that's a topic that... Uh... All right, I'll let you think about it. So, okay, well, let me, ask you, let me ask you a straight question then, because I've done these scenario things with students at my own university, so I actually have views, understandings of what they say. I mean, one of the things that we talk about is, is and I talk about quite a lot, is that is the need, is in future, people are going to get their lifelong learning online more than they are face-to-face. And so nobody should graduate from a college or a university without having taken at least one fully online course. And we've talked about online courses. We've talked about MOOCs, massive open online courses. And we've talked about, you know, that, that even if you're taking residential degrees, qualifications, some of these courses need to be online because you need practice. 
Does that fill you with joy? Or do you go, oh, no. Why would I bother? Because some colleagues said it's not worth it because you can all meet. You mean having an entire course online? Or? A fully, yeah, fully online course. You, you don't do anything with your, with, with your fellow students face-to-face. -face. No classes. Nothing. I think mutual agreement is that online resources are a useful tool, but they shouldn't, they shouldn't be the only um, tool used. Because, for example, I studied nursing, so we have a lot of practical, we have a lot of, uh, the course involves a lot of human contact. And if we had to do a course which was just online, then it would just end up being theory. And even the whole more human aspect of, educa of education, the fact that you meet people in a classroom and you make friends, it's the more fun part of education. I think that should also be taken into consideration, the whole socialization. Um, uh, I think that you shouldn't have the entire course online. It should be a bit of both, that it should be a part of it, a tool that is I mean, used. by course, I mean the module, not the whole, not the whole qualification. Is that clear? So if you okay. had 10 modules in your qualification, one of them might be online. So instead of having lectures for one module, it would just be online. And no lectures, no tutorials, no discussions, in, in, all online, yeah. The thing is, like what you said, no discussions, and a part of learning should be that there is active discussion. But they're online. It's just like using Twitter and Facebook, and you talk to people that way anyway, so what's the problem? It's the lack of human contact. Do you not use Facebook to have human contact? I'm pushing, I'm pushing you. I'm, come on, force the others to answer it. Come on, fa heavy Facebook users. Is Facebook not social contact? Yes, it, um, I, have, I have myself just finished a course online um, on leadership. And I was doing this course. It was part of a sort of Commonwealth thing. So there were many people coming from different countries wow. doing this. And it was very interesting to communicate to these people because knowing that it wouldn't have been possible had it not been to technology because I wouldn't have been possibly able to meet people from 53 different countries. So it had to be done virtually. And we had discussions and we had Skype calls. And I think the thing is mostly the fact that we are sort of not, we don't have this, it needs a culture change. Because if I had been sort of, I'm 20 years old and I've always been, adapting to this class situation where I go to class, I sit, I listen to everything in class, and then it's, you know what I mean? So it's, it's different, it's something different, and we need to learn how to adapt to it, and I think that is what we need. We need to teach our, the generation, I have grown up now, I, I consider myself, but other, pe other people, especially young people who are still in their primary and secondary years, should get this sort of awareness about how they can make the most of discussions online, how they can mo make the most of Skype, and how productive it can really be at the end of the day. Yeah. I mean, ha have any of you studied on an, on, on an online course, a MOOC or, you know, a Khan Academy type thing, whatever, no? No, okay, all right, I, I, but you have, so there's just one of you. Yeah, okay, great. Uh, any, any questions? Uh, yeah, I've got a hand up over there. Sorry. Uh, hi, my name is Daniel. Uh, I think that at the moment the policymakers and educators are uh, obsessed with providing our children and the students with the latest technolo technology. But I find that we are lacking uh, social aspects, and I believe that the roots of education uh, have to uh, align with... Um, social interactions and communication because children nowadays are losing various skills with regards to communication as can be seen uh, with various statistical information that is being provided and I find that to be very fundamental. Thank you. Great, thank you. All right, I've got three, I've got three questions from the wolves. <laughs> One, two, and then three, okay? Great. Go. Hi there. Thanks a lot for short questions, please. Thanks a lot for joining us today. A term we've been using is the term "digital natives" when we talk about your age group. So, unlike me, I only went on the internet for the first time as a student. What do you think of this term "digital natives"? Often we use it to say that you guys have grown up with technology, so you don't particularly need training in digital skills. I'd be interested to have your reaction to that. Anybody? Is it an insult? Does it not mean anything at all? <laughs> Does it mean different things? Uh, 
Uh, I can understand why you would call people from our generation and that, but um, I think sometimes it is taken for granted that we know how to use all sorts of technology just from experience. There are apps and uh, programs which we are obviously more digitally literate with, like Facebook and WhatsApp. Um, and I think that these platforms should be used for education since we already know how to use them. But sometimes it's a bit taken for granted that we know how to use everything. And there should still be some training for some new online platforms. Um, also, what I'd like to point out as well, even maybe connecting with what you said about Facebook, we're living in an age where we're kind of very, very connected online. But sometimes we tend to be a bit disconnected then on a more human face-to-face -face level. So we can't just focus on digital only. It's a very, very good tool and it can be used even um, uh, like what you said to um, provide more um, uh, learning opportunities in more different ways. So maybe more visual content etc. Um, but we can't get too disconnected then. And it's something which in children, we're seeing it a lot. Um, like the initiative which was discussed before that each child has a tablet. It's a great initiative, but we should still encourage children to put their tablet down and go outside and play. So it's um, very important that it's not just digital. Right, okay. Do you want to say something? Okay. Um, along with the points that Julia said, um, I think most people assume that we know how to use all forms of technology. The, the, the reality is, at least my generation, we're more used to using on a daily basis for communication and forms of technology that are relatively informal. I, for example, I will give you a small secret. I know how to use WhatsApp, I know how to use Facebook and everything, but and, and maybe till two years ago, I didn't even know how to send a formal email because at that point it was all just, hi, okay, that's it. So we need to learn, us for students, we need to have a basis of a formal way to communicate with someone because at the end of the day, if we go out in the working world, I mean, if I was an employer and I had someone just send me a WhatsApp or a Facebook message, yeah, it wouldn't work that much. So there needs to be some form of training. Obviously, we don't need to start from the basic. The basic was the reality is that my generation, the generation after mine, will know the basics. But certain things we do need to be educated about. Okay, great. Right. Um, you will have, those of you who are Northern European, Northern Hemisphere, sort of Northern time freak people like me will have realized we're running on Maltese time. Okay, this is Southern Mediterranean time. Okay, next question. Hello. Um, a, a bit of a slight difference in the, in, in difference in the question. Um, digital technology these days is used everywhere. You, you're studying uh, for a career uh, to find a job, a place of work. Do you feel that you, will be, you are being thought enough about the digital tools and skills that you will need when you go out, come out of, the, um, you know, of your studies and go and work? And what do you propose? Thank you. Any thoughts? Um. I think the, the material is there, but we are not being prepared from within the school. So once we go onto our workplace, then no, we wouldn't be um, that prepared. And obviously we'd find people who are already prepared there and we'd get our training through, through the initial um, training from, from work. So what we, we would, um, as students, require, or at least wish would be to have at least placements which would help us interact in real time with the type of workplaces which we would be in the future um, presented with. So at least we would get a, a view of the real life that's waiting for us out there. 
Great, thank you. Okay, well, we started on open education, so Cable, last question. So two very short questions. The first one is, uh, are textbooks expensive for you? And if they're expensive, are there cases where you're not buying them? So that's question number one. The second one is the, the two women on my left talked about disposable assignments and how you don't like those. And so I'm wondering if, if you would be interested in the fields that you're studying to help to co-create the courses and the content for the courses. But the point being, would you like to help direct what the course is about, what you're learning, what you need to learn as the course is proceeding? Would you like to be involved in that construction of the learning? Or are you satisfied to sit in rows and listen to the instructor and participate in disposable assignments? Uh, with regard to the disposable assignments, um, I think it's necessary that education is more of a back and forth process. So uh, there are a number of students who prefer to just sit there and listen, but I think it is necessary that the students are involved in the decision making process. And uh, I think a lot of students may feel like they need to learn something but it might not be part of the syllabus. So uh, then they might go on to informal learning and YouTube, for example. So it does make sense that the students help to give some structure to the course, even for then the future generations. So uh, for example, like what you mentioned yesterday, that the research carried out by the students of one year then can be used to um, uh, it can be passed on to the next year, and the next year will continue building on that. It's, uh, but it is necessary that the students participate, and it would be more of a, an active discussion. I think I will sort of speak on, refer to the point I was mentioning before. I think it's more of a culture change, which, which needs to be done. Because even when, leaving aside sort of the digital aspect of it, in class, people, especially, in, I, I will talk about Malta because I have always sort of been educated in Malta. We are not encouraged to speak up when, even when we don't understand something, we'll ask someone, we'll ask the, the, the person next to us. But we, we need to acquire certain skills. We still need, we are always sort of talking about skills and these things. But at the end of the day, we are just focusing about what will get us the grades. We are not focusing about what will sort of help put something better out there. We are just sort of recycling what is already there. For instance, speaking about myself, I'm studying law. And the Malta law, you're studying sort of the typical law, which is Maltese law. So there aren't any resources, I would say, especially when it comes to digital or online resources. And the problem is that we just go to class, we get everyone writes his notes, and then we just recycle that. And it stops there. And even when you were speaking about textbooks, that would be a brilliant idea because textbooks, especially law textbooks in Maltese, you, you, you need to buy them. And because some professor writes them, they are very expensive. So that would be idea if they are online, that would be brilliant.